Arthurian Legends looks super exciting, but let's talk about some pitfalls for second sets that you do not want to fall into. Well, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie and I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Today we're gonna to talk about Sorcery Contested Realm, the next set, Arthurian Legends, the second set in the whole uh, saga that is Sorcery Contested Realm. Super, super excited. Uh, today I wanna to talk about some of the pitfalls of second sets. I'm gonna come out right and start this off by saying I believe Arthurian Legends is going to be highly successful, uh, but that doesn't mean it's going to be free tendies and free money for you as a consumer. And I wanna give you some of the, the, the cautionary tales of previous games and second sets and the things to talk about. Before I get into that though, I do wanna share with you that we are doing a 1K, a $1,000 cash tournament on uh, August 24th here at Game Grove in Hurricane, West Virginia. If you search on the Sorcery Play Network, you can find all the info for that. It is just $10 to play. Uh, I'm hoping we have like 40 players or something like that. Uh, so it's a 1K, a $1,000 cash tournament. Uh, super excited, uh, sponsored by Kitchen Table TCG and Mint Collectibles, uh, gonna be really cool. And then October 4th is release day, Friday night uh, for Arthurian Legends. And we are going to be doing like a release draft at Game Grove. And then Saturday the 5th, we're gonna have a huge Arthurian Legends release party at Game Grove at 2 p.m. on Saturday. So I hope you can make it to one of those events or all of those events if you are in kind of the region it's gonna be a ton of fun I'm hoping we have a full house on Saturday of just people enjoying Arthurian Legends for the first time. Uh, we're gonna do a sealed tournament on Saturday and the draft on Friday. Uh, uh, the, the 1K, also shout out to Josh for, for hooking me up with a alpha foil shark for the winner as well, uh, just because Josh is Josh. All right, let's talk about second sets. First and foremost, uh, if you wanna pick up pre-orders, I do have a very small amount of boxes left at gamegrove.gg. I think we only have two bundles left um, and uh, then the boxes. Anybody who orders a bundle will get be able to get one of the uh, the avatar the elemental avatars at random and then anybody who orders any individual box uh, we had a bunch of the other avatars made uh, super cool these are just like uh, these are just like proxies of uh, the avatars so everybody who orders a booster box uh, will get a really cool proxy of one of the random avatars they have a kitchen table TCG back it's just a fun way of celebrating the game uh, and giving back to you guys who are supporting the channel so let's get into it now that I told you to buy our Arthurian Legends. Let's talk about the pitfalls for buying too much Arthurian Legends. That's what we're talking about. It's like a little bit of a, a double-edged sword here. Arthurian Legends is going to be great, but it's not going to be free tendies. Um, and so here we go. Uh, the first pitfall you can fall into when ordering a second set is over-ordering and buying boxes, not with the intention of opening and playing for yourself, but buying a bunch of boxes with the intention of flipping and setting that as your standard for success for a set. The idea that you can just make money off of a second set. Um, and here's why this doesn't work for second sets uh, like, you know, like we're seeing. The first and foremost is that the print runs are typically honed in in a second or third set. In other words, when Alpha came out, it was the Kickstarter, that's a whole different thing. When Beta came out, they had to take a stab at what they thought the demand was. And they've learned a lot. Hopefully, the team at Sorcery has learned a lot over the last year of watching people engage with their game, and they have curated the print run uh, to make the, the maximum amount of profit uh, that the game company can make without crashing the market. I think that should be the attitude of which we expect Eric Curiosa to go about print runs, is that they want to have a healthy market, but they also want to make a money because, uh, make a money, they all want to make the money. It's me, Mario. Uh, I'm Italian, so you know. Uh, they also want to make the money uh, so that they can run a business, right? It makes sense. If, if we want the game to be successful, we should want them to have this balance where they can make money and run a successful business, and the market kind of stabilizes and is a healthy environment for both players, collectors, and stores and that that should be what we want as a consumer so the print runs should be figured out by now which means that the ease of which you will be able to flip a box above msrp or above retail pricing to make money is going to be less now with beta 
They couldn't know that. They didn't have the details. They didn't have the data behind them to print the correct number of boxes. And that's why you've seen them kind of reprint and have some different waves and some different stuff. And they are also planning on doing that for Arthurian Legends. So the first pitfall that you can fall into is ordering a metric ton of boxes with the idea that nobody else is going to be able to get boxes and so then you can flip them. That is a pitfall that often people fall into for second sets. Um, additionally to the, the print run being probably more accurate to what it needs to be, there is now officially businesses involved in sorcery. There are people who have started and quit their jobs and are and singles. There's people who have figured out how to create businesses revolving around this game now, which always changes the dichotomy of the market. It, it no longer is organically growing. It has grown into something already, which causes, again, difference in markets and difference in shakeup. So it, it affects the idea of overordering. It's no longer individuals, but you have all these businesses involved, which changes that. The second side is that for a second set, the demand is always going to be less speculative. With beta and alpha, you had a lot of speculation, a lot of uh, people who wanted to invest in that kind of idea, and those are the sets of which people get involved in that, the first sets, the, the first initial product. In a second set, you're always going to have less people coming in with this kind of speculative idea of investment. It's just the way that it works. If I was going to put $10,000 into product, I'd much rather put that into alpha, which I know is going to have this kind of long-term kind of collectible nature rather than something that has more risk like Arthurian Legends. And so what happens is that the speculation moves either to other games or it moves into the earlier product. Very rarely does a speculative kind of asset go into the next set, that kind of thing. Um, so what do you do? Uh, what do you do if you are, you know, buying boxes and you're at GameGrove.gg? How should you handle that? Well, in my opinion, like the perfect number would be a case. To pick up a case of boxes, I think gives you enough that you are cracking for a couple days, you're having fun, and it should give you plenty of the cards, especially in a 240 card set. I think a case is going to get you pretty much what you need in order to then trade your cards and handle that kind of thing. So if you are, at, at, I mean, there's people who obviously can't afford a full case too. I'm not saying that you have to buy a case, but I'm saying at some point for the initial run, I think for most people buying six boxes is going to be enough to kind of get to Arthurian Legends and really explore it. And then you can kind of pick up the singles that you need, which leads us to pitfall number two, which is panic buying singles. I have done this. Okay. I want you to learn from me. I have done this so many times in these games. I have panic bought singles. I've been locked live opening packs and buying cards and spending money that was way, way, way too high because I was panic buying singles. And now again, I'm not trying to get you not to buy stuff, okay? I want you to buy stuff. I want you to buy boxes at GameGrove.gg. I'm gonna be cracking open probably 100 boxes for singles. I'm gonna want you to buy singles. But there's a difference between buying singles in a rational manner and really understanding the price that you're buying for and panic buying singles on the weekend of release day. And it seems like a lot of the time, we as a community, not just sorcery, but all TCG enthusiasts and people, get a little bit panicky and we buy and we overspend money that doesn't make a ton of sense on the cards that we're buying. And so when you do go to buy singles, I, I want you to make sure that you are aware that the first kind of week is a risky time to be buying singles. There's always going to be another copy of the card. This, this, I, I highly doubt we see serialized cards in Arthurian Legends. But we, there's always going to be another, even Curio, that is pulled. There's always going to be another of the, the biggest foil in the set. There's always going to be another opportunity. So only spend what you are willing to risk in terms of, you know, the, the difference in value. Again, I'm not trying to, like downplay this and say that you shouldn't buy singles or be excited about buying singles. I think that's fair. I think you should be. 
but you have to have a an even keeled temper when going into this stuff. Um, rarely does the first to buy come out ahead unless we get into like grading. And like Pokemon's weird. Uh, when a new Pokemon set comes out, I always see people buying up the highest card and then they grade them and then they see them come back and they flip around and sell them. The demand of Pokemon allows people to buy cards on initial release, grade them two weeks later, sell them as PSA 10s and make a significant amount of money. I'm not convinced that Sorcery has figured out, um, I'm not convinced that the Sorcery community has figured out grading yet in a way uh, that that works. I wish it did. I wish we cared about that, you know, because I, th I think that's a, a valuable part of a community. Um, but it doesn't seem like that is the thing. So I just think that the... The playing field is a little bit different for sorcery and that initial buying, typically you're gonna have a, a loss if you're the first person to buy a big card like that. So um, the, the second side of panic buying singles is for the, the player base. Um, the meta is going to be changed. Uh, and, and so I don't know that world, right? Like maybe you're like a top tier player and you're like, I know these cards are gonna be good. So you buy those. That's, listen, that is, you go do that. That's not where I shine. That is not my my strength. I think there is some, uh, those of you who are really smart in the gameplay side, I think there are some wins to be had as you know cards kind of get released uh, and the meta kind of will shift and people will want to play different archetypes of the game. Um, but I don't know that world. So I don't, I don't engage in that. Speaking of that, we have speculation on beta, which is the third pitfall of which you can try, you know, which you can fall in. I've heard a lot of conversation about this recently, that Arthurian Legends is going to pump the price of beta cards and sealed and all that stuff. And there is a lot of reason for that speculation. There's a lot of reason that people could say that. Uh, obviously, you're going to have more people coming into the game with Arthurian Legends. They will want beta cards. They will want to buy beta cards. They will want to open up beta. You will see a growth in the demand for beta as a result of people who are excited to come into the game with Arthurian Legends. That being said, you will also see a, an attitude shift of most of the current community very excited for Arthurian Legends. And a lot of those people will have beta boxes, they'll have beta singles, they'll have a, a slew of product that they want to move and they want to sell. And this is the perfect dichotomy of, an, of, of, a, uh, of a game. Like you have new players who create demand and the old players use that, you know, use those new players to sell cards to fund the new product and to fund the new set. That's a really great kind of organic nature of a TCG. As soon as you start saying, I'm gonna speculate on that and I'm going to buy up a bunch of beta cards so that the cards are more, it kind of like gets a little hairy and, and it gets a little bit weird. And I think this is a pitfall. You're going to see some cards in beta move up or down as a result of Arthurian Legends singles and Arthurian Legends cards and spoilers and all that kind of stuff. I still think it's way, way too early in the world of sorcery to say that a new set releasing is going to cause the singles of the previous set to really pump like it does in like Magic the Gathering, where you have a player base of a million players and a huge number of people who are involved in that. I think sorcery is still, still too organic and too small to really see that kind of market shake up. That's just my opinion though. It's it, if you like doing that, I know it's a lot of fun, trust me. Like I've, I've been involved in that kind of like uh, thinking of speculating on this card and that card and whatever. I've been involved in that, I know it's a lot of fun. Just know that it is a pitfall and it comes with increased risk. And I think the heart of this video is to make you not, not do those things, but aware of the risks that you're taking and that it's not sorcery's responsibility for your risk to come out ahead that when you take a risk like that, it's your personal responsibility. And at the end of the day, like make sure you know that if you're speculating on cards, that's what it is. It is wild speculation. Uh, and that it's not sorcery TCG's responsibility to pump your bags and that kind of stuff. So uh, those are the three pitfalls. Don't over order, don't panic buy singles and uh, watch out on your speculation on beta stuff. Uh, I don't believe that Arthurian Legends is going to be Tendy Town. I don't think it's gonna be free money uh, for 
those who buy, I do think that it's going to be very, very successful. Uh, the demand for boxes on the website has been absolutely crazy. I mean, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, when we launched them, I couldn't keep boxes in stock. Uh, and now things have slowed down from the, uh, the initial release of my boxes and we're getting close to being kind of out. So uh, it's really cool to see the demand. I think it's a really, really great organic demand. Um, I do not think though, again, that it's gonna be free tendies and free money for anybody who buys as a result of all those things I said. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day and I hope you will come to uh, either the 1K on August 24th or to the release party for Arthurian Legends on, uh, on October 4th and then October 5th. Um, if you do come to the release party, you can select local pickup at gamegrove.gg. You can select local pickup and we will have the boxes there for you at Game Grove when you come to the events. Again, I hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.